the hour now. You are live in the CNN newsroom, and I am Pamela Brown in Washington on this Saturday. Thanks so much for being here with us. Well, after a seemingly turbulent first month in office, President Trump is doing everything he can to control the narrative. One way he's trying to do that is by rewinding to what he's comfortable with, and of course, that would be the campaign trail. He held a major rally in Florida tonight. The White House says it was an official campaign event. And from the very beginning, the president made it crystal clear why he was there. I'm here because I want to be among my friends and among the people. I also want to speak to you without the filter of the fake news. All right, let's bring in my panel. Joining me now is Stephen Collinson, CNN Politics Senior Reporter, Julian Zelizer, historian and professor at Princeton University, Alice Stewart, CNN political commentator and Republican strategist, and Washahat Ali, a New York Times contributor. Thank you to the four of you for coming on, sticking around to be on the show here. Uh, Stephen, first to you, Trump's first month has been perceived as chaotic. Uh, did tonight help? I think it probably helped a little bit in changing the subject. That's what that rally was about. That's what the freewheeling press conference the other day was about as well. Donald Trump trying to get the story away from all these stories that he mentioned himself in his press conference of the White House in chaos and in disarray uh, and to try and move it on a little. Uh, I think if you think about it, uh, Taking care of his supporters is going to be a very important requirement of the White House in this presidency. Donald Trump won the presidency with a fairly narrow base. Uh, he didn't really broaden his support through the election campaign as many of us thought he would have to to win the presidency. So he cannot afford any erosion whatsoever from his base support. And that'll be something that's very important uh, going forward. So the question then becomes, though, can you build a successful presidency on that kind of fairly uh, narrow channeling to your supporters? You need to build uh, support around legislation. We saw him do a little bit of that, trying to calling on Democrats to join him in an infrastructure package. But I think the jury is still out on whether he can sustain his political momentum for four years just appealing to the people that sent him to the White House. Right, because past presidents, when they've done these kind of rallies early on, it's to achieve a specific objective. Like for President Obama, it was his package. Um, I want to ask you, Alice, back in November, Trump tweeted this. Let's, he said, looking at Air Force One at MIA, why is he campaigning instead of creating jobs and fixing Obamacare? Get back to work for the American people. All right, Alice, Mr. Trump's been in office for less than a month. Should he be creating jobs and coming up with a health care replacement instead of going to this campaign rallying and promising what he's going to do? Uh, it's Saturday night uh, at 8 o'clock. I don't know what people expect him to be doing in terms of creating jobs, to be um, slaving away over legislation in Washington tonight. Look, he has set plans into motion to create jobs. He has taken action to do all the campaign promises that he promised to do, which uh, includes securing the border, repealing and replacing Obama, creating an environment and a tax plan and uh, reforming the tax code to allow businesses to create jobs. In Florida, I worked for Governor Rick Scott. Jobs, jobs, jobs is critical Thank in that state. Everybody. And he talked about that quite a bit this evening on, on how his uh, tax package will be able to help do just that. So I, I think what we're going to see is, as he has said, we will see more details of the repeal and replace of Obamacare in the next few weeks. He also did well this Don't evening break. to f roll the ball down the field with regard to the travel ban. We expect to see uh, another executive order possibly introduced next week, so I think that's good. But as he said uh, to reporters prior to the event tonight, in his view, life is a campaign and making America great is a campaign. And in order to be successful on these agenda items that he has, he needs to get out there to the people. He needs to bypass the media. He needs to get an unfiltered message to the people in order for these to be accomplished. And that's exactly what he did. So that in, in terms of his goal and his mission, it was to bypass the media, speak directly to the people, and get that message out there, and to certainly uh, thank them for their support, which is exactly what he was able to accomplish. And in fact, he had one of them come up on stage, Gene Huber, who we uh, spoke to on the show after, uh, after he went up to the podium and, and said a few words. And he couldn't have been more enthusiastic about uh, President Trump. He said he'd supported him for two years, um, Wajahat. On that note, you have people like him and others who are at that rally today um, so excited for President Trump. 
Trump who say, look, he's doing exactly what we put him in, in office to do. Um, he met with the C with CEOs of major companies. He signed the executive order uh, for the border wall. He made these promises of bringing back jobs and strengthening our borders. Isn't that what the, the voters want, Wajahat? Uh, no, there's a lot of hot air and talking points that appeal to his base, and his base, unfortunately, is small. It's not the majority. And as we know, President Trump has the lowest favorability rating of any incoming president in modern history. And I want to remind him, you have won the presidency. Stop campaigning. Stop doing alternative facts about the size of your crowds, the size of your electoral votes, the size of your hands, all small. Get on with it. Be presidential. But there are only two reasons why he did this rally today and the conference from two days ago. Number one, because his White House is in a dysfunctional disarray. There are massive leaks all the time from Republicans within the White House. People have no idea what's happening. You can see that Sean Spicer says something, Mike Pence says something, Kellyanne Conway says something, Donald Trump says something. Number two, we have to keep our eye on the ball. Russia. Finally, we found out that Michael Flynn lied about his conversation to the Russian ambassador. Donald Trump knew about it. He kept quiet. Mike Pence was allowed to lie. For a month, he kept quiet, even though the DOJ said he is compromised. Michael Flynn could be blackmailed. The only time Donald Trump said something which forced a resignation of Michael Flynn was after the enemy, the press, Washington Post, mentioned it this week. And then right after that, huge news, our intelligence agencies finally confirmed that people close to Trump have been talking to Russian intelligence before the election. That is huge. We also saw a dossier by MI6 agent Christopher Steele, very respected. A lot of allegations, Pam, but slowly but surely one or two of those allegations, as more investigations are happening, are turning out to be true. So he's deflecting from the dysfunction. He's defect, defle, uh, defecting from the fact that the Muslim ban failed, the raid in Yemen failed, the wall is not going to be built because Mexico said we're not going to pay for it. He's making enemies out of allies like Australia, of all people. And the fact he does not have a national security advisor right now a month in because Michael Flynn, who lied about talking to Russia, was forced to resign. Russia is the, the big picture here, and he's trying to deflect from that. And just to be clear, um, you said Mike Pence was allowed to lie. Um, it Excuse is true me, that Michael lied. Flynn... He, sir. He, he lied, yes. but he... he because what he was told by Michael Flynn that he didn't right, talk correct. about sanctions correct. and then it was after he went on the morning shows that the White House was alerted by DOJ about um, the sanctions discussion. Um, I want to go to you Julian. Trump defended his attacks against the press by saying other presidents did it as well. Let's take a listen. Thomas Jefferson, Andrew Jackson and Abraham Lincoln and many of our greatest presidents fought with the media and called them out oftentimes on their lies. On their lies. So here's the quote from Thomas Jefferson. It says, were it left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate a moment to prefer the latter. Um, this is a founding father who, of course, as we know, supported the, you know, the First Amendment, freedom of the press. Um, Julian, what is your reaction to that? Tom, Thomas Jefferson believed deeply in the importance of the free press, the press, to the survival of this republic. He was frustrated as the press became more partisan, but he believed in the media as an institution. And I think the comparison with President Trump is different. Uh, what many people feel they are watching is a president who is just questioning the legitimacy of the entire media, uh, not simply as being too partisan. He's arguing they are just putting out fake news. Uh, and this is a different kind of attack than we saw with previous presidents. And it's not clear to many people how much he even values the press as an institution, mm. even though, ironically, he has used that as the centerpiece of his campaign and right now uh, of his presidency, as we just saw. And yeah. Alice, go ahead. I just want to weigh in. I think critically, I think that the point, the quote you just pulled from Thomas Jefferson is important. And it's important to keep in mind the reason the media is referred to as the fourth estate oftentimes is because it is important to have them to keep a check and balance and be a, a, a guide to keeping feet to the fire, those in government. They are an important part of a free democracy without a doubt. 
Donald Trump feels as though they report information inaccurately, and he repeatedly reminds the American people to make sure and hold them accountable. That is what he feels strongly. I want to remind everyone, back when President Obama was president, uh, uh, Anita Dunn, who I think the world of and have a lot of respect for, she also would point out with Fox News, she referred to them as opinion journalists posed as news. So the idea that we have administrations or presidents who don't uh, see the news as, as credible is not anything new. Clearly Donald Trump uses this as a way to um, uh, connect with his people and, and drive a wedge uh, between s oftentimes the critical stories that are uh, written about him and w what is actually true. And I think that is something that he has done throughout the campaign, throughout the, the general election and the primary, and it's not going to change. I think people just need to get used to that. And what we're seeing with him having these rallies, it's a way to connect directly to the people unfiltered. That's why we see uh, his constant tweets. That's his way of getting directly to the people and bypassing the media. That is clearly something that is the way he feels and is absolutely not going to change. But respectfully, we should right. not get used to lies. We should he not get used to right. lies. He has every right. Hold on. He has every right. Alice to, to, to say what he wants to say about the media, um, but to, to, to compare it to what past administrations has said is just simply, it's, it's a false uh, equivalent because now he's saying the entire media as a whole uh, is the enemy of the American people. And it's not only that, it's also the checks and balances of the judiciary with his travel ban. I mean, he directly went after uh, judges who didn't uphold his travel ban. Do you think this is bigger than just he doesn't like the headlines, Alice? Do you think this is he doesn't want to be checked and balanced? It's something that he didn't have to really deal with as a businessman, and now he's in the White House. Do you think it more has to do with him feeling threatened, as some has, have argued? First, let me point out that I don't agree with the, the, his comments about fake news. I don't agree that journalists report all things inaccurately. I do think facts are important. I think it's important when uh, a factual and accurate statement is made that it be corrected from whether it be the president or with members of the new, news media. I think uh, making sure accurate information out there is critical no matter who it comes from. 100%. But sure, Donald Trump, whenever someone pushes him, he pushes back. That's always what he's done. He did it throughout the campaign and he will continue to do it. That's part of his nature and that's, that's not going to change. And that's, he's doing to the media now what he did with uh, every candidate that nipped on his heels throughout the campaign. That's just his nature and, and that's, that's part of who he is. All right, Stephen Collinson, Julian Delazer, Alice Stewart, and Wajahat Ali, thank you very much for that uh, very you. important discussion that we just yeah. had. And stick around, we have more to discuss coming up on the